to demand fairness wherever it can be found. Which is why on election night, I declare that our fight to count every vote is not about me. It is about us. It is about the democracy that we share and our responsibility to preserve our way of life. Our democracy. Because voting is not a right for some. It is a right for all. And it is not a privilege. I stand here today as witness to that truth. This election is about all of us, as is the resolution of this moment. I acknowledge that former Secretary of State Brian Kemp will be certified as the victor in the 2018 gubernatorial election. But to watch an elected official who claims to represent the people in this state baldly pin his hopes for election on the suppression of the people's democratic right to vote has been truly appalling. So let's be clear, this is not a speech of concession. Because concession means to acknowledge an action is right, true, or proper. As a woman of conscience and faith, I cannot concede that. But my assessment is the law currently allows no further viable remedy. Now, I could certainly bring a new case to keep this one contest alive, but I don't want to hold public office if I need to scheme my way into the post. Because the title of governor isn't nearly as important as our shared title, voters. And that is why we fight on and why I want to say thank you. With forcing Brian Kemp into a December 4th runoff mathematically impossible, Democratic candidate Stacey Abrams has conceded that he will be the next governor of Georgia without actually conceding. And for good reason. Kemp employed some egregious, blatant forms of voter suppression in the state. He expelled 300,000 voters from the rolls, erroneously claiming that they left the state. They didn't. He put 53,000 voter registrations, 70% of which were from minority voters, on hold because of his exact match system, where a single misplaced letter or a hyphen between voter registration information and state records would render a voter ineligible. 3,000 citizens were flagged as non-citizens. Surprise, they were citizens. And for those who managed to escape all of this, well, there were broken voting machines to contend with on election day itself that just so happened to be found mostly in minority districts. We all knew that voting was today. And only in my neighborhood, people are waiting an hour after the polls open to vote. And they're saying, that we don't have power cords. Opportunistic, everyone in the world knew we were gonna to vote today. And in my neighborhood, there are no power cords. The building is full of power. No power cords. All these dedicated people waiting to vote. This is what we call voter suppression. This is what we go through to vote. This is a case in which a man who has failed at his job, failed the voters of his state, and failed the basic tenets of our democracy, got a promotion. But not only has Georgia become ground zero for Democrats in 2020, but Stacey Abrams is not going anywhere either.